Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Oh, it is good to be home. And let me give the Loveline phone number out right at the top. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Loveline fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and an addiction medicine specialist. And I uh, I hate to admit it, but it's good to see you, Doc. I, I hate to say the same thing, but it's good to have you back. I it, was, it, was, it was strangely uh, invigorating to be in that seat, but uh, you were missed. Thank you. And yeah. mahalo. I was having a difficulty functioning last night. I needed somebody to sort of play off of. Right, 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 right. It, was, it is different, isn't it? It was like yeah. uh, playing a handball against the drapes. Yeah. It just was not coming back. Yes, yes, right. And it felt awkward and strange. Right. So um, God bless you, Drew. Don't go anywhere. Or if you do, just send one of your buddies. I, it doesn't really matter who's here, just right. as long as I, I'm I, here. I, I, I wouldn't expect you to say otherwise. So you understand. Thank you. Well, Drew, Mahalo. I had a great time. I missed you. Uh, you had your moment in the sun last night, but the uh, the big man is back. Yeah. And uh, because of numerous requests I've received from kids all around this oh, great land no. of ours, oh, no, no. it is time to once again air the Can I Say That Shuffle by Dr. Drew. The penis is dysfunctional. Pee on this stick. It makes me sick. Pee on this stick. It makes me sick. If I find you stealing my underwear again, here's what's going to happen. Asshole. Stuff like this. Stuff like this. Stuff like this. It makes me sick. You're fat. Asshole. You're fat. Can I say that? You're fat. Hard. You're overweight. I want to be dominated. You're gay. I want to be dominated. You're gay. When I was 19, I ate about four boiled peyote buttons and stayed up all night but felt no effect. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? This is not acceptable. Can I say that? You're fat. Not acceptable. Pee on this stick. Not acceptable. Boiled peyote button. Not acceptable. You're overweight. Not acceptable. Can I say, Can I say that? that? The penis is very dysfunctional. Oh, yes, it certainly is, Drew. And, um, boy, we got a full plate this week, Drew. You know, uh, we have Adam West coming up on Wednesday. Right. We have the Deftones on Thursday. And a mm. very special surprise guest. Tomorrow night, we're going to have Sandy Duncan. Cut off her clitoris. Let's sew up her vagina. Let's bind her feet. Let's offer her heart to, uh, to a god. Drew, I had no idea you had such strong feelings against the wheat then. Basically, woman. I think this is what you have to do in order to give me some kind of a even almost partial compliment. You came back and said, I missed you, and then had to just barrage me with this crap. Well, you know, I giveth, then I taketh yeah, away, indeed you do. and then I rameth up the A. Yeah. <laughs> And the keister. <laughs> yeah. All right, Drew, are you ready to help the yes, uh, Youth I of am. America fan? Thank Fantastic. you, and good night. Colleen, 19, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. Uh, Adam, I just want to tell you that I saw you at Etchfest, and I like your butt. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. I saw you up really close. I was up there by corn and everything. That was the best one, corn rock. But I have this problem. You didn't see the uh, napitude pushing through the back <laughs> of the pants? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I have this problem. Mm -hmm. I've had this boyfriend for like two and a half years. And last night I came home, and I lived with these two other guys because I just moved in with them recently because I needed a place to live. And, I mean, we didn't... Hold on. Colleen, Colleen. What? Please, turn the goddamn radio down. Down. How come I can hear me? I don't know. Or maybe it's just the television. Could so, be. Something in the background is, is very distinct. No, I heard my distinctive nasally drone <laughs> in the background. Now, Colleen, don't lie to me. Well, turn. it's down now. Okay. Okay. But um, Oh, you're batting a thousand, Colleen. <laughs> Colleen, you and your female or male roommate? Uh, male. Okay. Okay. And we were both kind of a little drunk, and we kind of started making out. And I just, I don't know. I've been going out with my boyfriend for so long. I don't know if I should tell him or just, like, forget about it, because I don't think anything else is going to happen after that. All right, yeah. let, let me just put this warning out to people who are listening. If you sit down and watch a porno movie and have a few beers, you are going to get it on. I mean, if I watched a porno movie with my mother and grandmother and Mother Teresa, it would turn, and after a couple of beers, it would turn into an orgy. <laughs> you are going to hump the closest thing around if you watch a porno movie and have a few beers. Well, we didn't, we didn't have sex or anything. We just kind of messed around a little bit. All right. And here's, here's what I would say. 
And Drew, you tell me what you think of this. I believe, and I just want people to start taking a little more responsibility for their actions. People give us this story. Well, he was around. There's nothing on TV. So we put the, we put the porn movie on. Then we decided to make up a batch of hot toddies and get loaded. Then he decided to show me his collection of vibrators. Then we go ahead and we hired a couple of uh, female strippers to come in the room do a simulated lesbian act. <laughs> and then one thing led to another. <laughs> and somehow we ended up getting it on. And Duh! Exactly. <laughs> Here's my point. You know what's going on somewhere in the annals of, of, of your mind or as you you're don't. putting the porn movie in. Right. If you don't. I'm not even attracted to this guy, though. Yeah, but I mean, that's the very point. Is people shouldn't put themselves in these positions where things are likely to happen. Well, it's okay if you want something to happen. Yeah. But well, ladies I... know uh, when you're putting the porn movie in and he's running out to the Circle K to get the 12-pack, something's going to happen. <laughs> Believe me, in his mind, something was happening, oh, about the time he flipped well, see, through the uh, TV too. guide. Yeah. yeah, but but Colleen, it really more than anything else, this speaks about your commitment to your boyfriend. Yeah. And it doesn't speak highly of that. Well, I've never done anything like this I, before. I understand, never. but but maybe this relationship is sort of burning out. Okay. You know, maybe this is either you need to take a good hard look at what is going on there, or what needs are not getting met by your boyfriend for uh -huh. you, or whether or not this perhaps isn't the time to sort of wrap up this relationship, which is sort of a typical thing that would happen for a relationship that would have started when you were 16. Well, or 17. Yeah. Or, or maybe you just... I, I really love this guy, though. I don't um, want to break up with him or anything. No, that's obvious. That's obvious by the amount of porn you watch with other guys. Yeah. Oh, it was just... All right, listen. You're bored. All right, Colleen, I'm oh. done I'm done bashing you. Yeah, okay. work the bored excuse yeah. in when you tell him. <laughs> right. Yeah, there was nothing bored. to do. It was either uh, well, play he, crossword he puzzle or blow it. my roommate. So, Colleen... We watched it. Listen, let's get out of the denial city here for a second. <laughs> don't tell your boyfriend anything. Okay. Obviously, make sure your roommate doesn't say anything, and he should keep his big trap shut because he's got a girlfriend. Yeah. Keep it cool. Tell him uh, it's not going to happen again. Okay. Hide the porn. Uh, better than hide the porn. Why don't you uh, send it over here? And okay. I'll, I'll put it in my uh, hermetically sealed porn locker and keep an eye on it until you guys are responsible enough to use it wisely. Okay. All right? Don't I'll say anything and make it up to your boyfriend, but don't go over the top. If you go too much, he's going to know something's up. Right. Same with guys. Too many flowers, too much candy. Oh, just because. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, just because I was banging your best friend the night before. That's right. the because. Am I right, Drew? That's right. All right. Oh, we're back. Doug, 25, you're on Love Line. Hi, how you doing? Good. Um, got a slight little problem. I've been dating this girl for about, like, two weeks. Well, maybe a little more. I'm not sure. And... Uh, I've been in, like, bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship, and it's like eight of them right in a row. I'm married, or I was married. I'm divorced now, and that was the first that started it all off. Wow. Up. Yeah. Uh, um, and I'm only 25. You get that? Yeah, we got uh, that. <laughs> and um, Proud of you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm proud of me, too. Right. Any um, little dugs running around? No. Thank God, no. Yeah. Okay, good. I don't think the world can handle two of me. Um, my problem is she's, like, already talking about moving in. And I, you said you dated her two weeks. I've been dating her for like two weeks. Doug. Yeah. Have you uh, have you moved into her? Uh, no, nothing's happened yet. Wow, she's talking about moving in before your your penis uh, sets up a uh, house in her vagina. Exactly. It sounds like she's trying to get away from something, doesn't it? Like she's really trying. Well, to... I, I I do know she's trying to get out of her her, her dad's house. Right. But it, at the same time, I mean, I know she has feelings for me. Yeah, of course. And, but you're you're I'm... you're the the convenient first... feelings. Yeah. Patsy esque feelings for you. No, Doug. They might be quite intense, but it's clear that she is trying to escape. It's just some kind of a flee. Doug, fleeing. Doug, let me let me uh, tell you a little story about when uh, when a when a good friend of mine, coincidentally named Adam, was twenty five and decided to rush in to residence with his uh, stripper girlfriend. Oh, that must have been a beautiful experience. Beginning of the end. <laughs> How long did you live with her after that? Uh, well, we lived together for like eleven months, and then uh, I went to Hawaii. Uh, for a uh, wedding that I told her was just going to be a big, uh, you know, big bunch of guys going until a bunch of girls came up there and said, oh, you're not going? Oh. And when I came home from Hawaii, she, she was gone. Yeah. And I bought her this $4 gecko shirt and everything, but she's still gone. And then I convinced her for about a summer to move back. That took three months. And then she moved so back. You, to, wait, wait, you, you probably stalked her and begged her to move back. 
Then when you got her back, you weren't interested anymore. Does that work? Absolutely not. I was interested for almost a week. All right. And then I went right back to it. I can throw another strange twist into this because I'm also her boss. No, don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> Doug, don't do this. Doug, I mean, then it we, smells we like both trouble. We really care about each other. We no, do. yeah. Because it started way before it started before we before she started working for me. I hired her on after we started going. Recently. You know, you're setting yourself up for uh, a sexual abuse allegation. And Doug, one thing. You really... that's why we're not working at the same store. She's she's an employee of of the company I work for. Right. She can still but claim. I'm, in a diff- I'm in a different store. Are you she... a manager? Uh, yes. Don't you have rules against that? Uh, there is no set guidelines. They mm-hmm. don't have some sort of safety film there at the Wiener Schnitzel they show you down in the basement? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, there are no set guidelines. As far as that goes, they, they kind of, they, they kind of influence, they, well, they don't influence, but they, they don't. I'm sure they frown upon it, Doug. No, they don't frown upon it. That's, it's just the opposite. Oh, they don't encourage you dating the they fry cooks. They don't encourage it, but they don't frown upon it at the same time. Mm. They're okay. not encouraging it. Doug, listen to me. First off, don't be bragging about the fact that you got her job after you started going out. That doesn't look great on the resume. Oh, no, no. Number two, you've only been going out for a few weeks. I don't care who it is. And she has an ulterior motive, which is she wants to get the hell out of the house. Yeah. So just chill out. Tell her to chill out. And if she's into you, she's not going anywhere. Am I right, Drew? You're right. People rush into this stuff, and then all hell breaks loose. Rick, 19, you're on Love Line. Uh, yeah, i got a problem with uh, uh, I've already got it. Is one child already on the way, and um, anyway, the, the reason is I have a problem with condoms. I, it's kind of I don't know if it's a psychological problem, but whenever I put one on or she puts one on, whatever, my penis seems to kind of go soft. You know what I'm saying? All right, Rick, you're 19. Right. You got one on the way. Right. Oh, hold on a second, Rick. Let me go on a tirade. I've just come up with something, Drew. Mm. Something just hit me. Mm-hmm. I was sitting here thinking, what a cruel joke it is that the Lord plays on humans. That basically 16, and we know Rick is at the ripe old age of 19, but 15-year-olds can knock up Mm -hmm. 13-year-olds, 15-year-olds can do 14-year-olds. Half the callers we got have a little litter before the age of 20, right? and they're all going to hell in the basket. I mean, they can't look after these kids. And I was just thinking to myself, what a cruel joke it is of the Almighty that people, I mean, really, if you had to restructure, I mean, if you're up there, and you're up there, and you're, you're God. Yeah. And you're making man. Mm. You made woman. You got your hundred pounds of clay. You mold it into a woman. And you're making man and you're making stuff. You got like, you know, some uh, big, big band of testes back there and uh, 300 lineal feet of fallopian tubing over here. And you're building a woman. Mm. Wouldn't you make it now that they couldn't conceive until they were like, let's say, in the early 20s, mm-hmm. maybe 21, 22, and that a man only reached his sexual maturity or, or, or the, the point where sperm was any good. Right. Until he's like 23, yes, 24. Yes. Why yes. 14? And right. then I thought about it. This just hit me. People used to only live till 33. That's why. That's why. You know how old Romeo and Juliet were? Uh, they were uh, four. No, they were 15. Really? Yeah. That's not a true story, is it? But, I mean, they're, they're thought to have been teenagers, young, middle age, you know, sort of middle adolescents. Right. Right. And so when you only live to 33, then you got to get going at That's 14. Right. But That's now... Right. I mean, by, by was by 24, uh, was Alexander the Great had already conquered... Oh, well, sure, Drew. That's uh, that's common knowledge. Here's what I'm saying, Drew. <laughs> Thanks for the bizarre uh, Russian saying? reference. What but saying? here's what I'm saying. Now people with uh, with you people uh, saving everybody and everyone having a, a big fit when Kevorkian knocks off a couple of yeah. geezers. Yeah. Now everyone lives till 90. That's right. Now they're all pregnant. It's, they're still pregnant at 16. That's right. Somehow we got to push this back and keep it in line with yes. the average age of the people, meaning people died when they were 32, yeah. and now they're dying when they're 82, so you shouldn't be able to get pregnant until yeah. you're 52. Yeah, yeah. Can uh, you do something, something that. about that? And, you know, you're you always ranting raving about population explosion, but, in fact, most of the population is growth from diminishing the death rate, not from increasing the birth rate. That's right. Guys like you, up on your high horse, going to save everybody, so I have to get behind everyone in bank. At the bank, at the DMV, and there's traffic everywhere, and not enough to eat. Rick? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, about what? <laughs> <laughs> about Alexander the Great. Oh, I don't you know. know actually, it. actually, Adam actually came up with a solution to Rick's problem a few weeks ago. Oh, which is the, uh, what is your, uh, Rick, you, Rick you go goes, limp when you're putting the condom on. Right. Exactly. Even if she puts it on, it don't matter. All right. We call this Doc Corolla's quick condom quick loader no 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 that you, that you never came up with oh i didn't but you actually suggested oh okay yeah rick 
Here's what you got to do, baby. Okay. You got to drill. Right. You ever turn on, uh, like, ESPN2 at 4 in the morning and they have the uh, Fireman Olympics? Bunch of like bunch of big forearm guys running down some runway with a length of hose behind them or trying to tilt up a ladder or something and some guy with a stopwatch. You have to do that. The Olympics are coming up, Rick. You should you should pick up a sponsor and train that way. Uh, to get Trojan to sponsor you. What I'm saying is is your problem is is you got the penis good and hard, right? Uh-huh. Then comes time to put the condom on, right? Right. In the time it takes you to put on the condom, turn on the light, find the condom. Up, oh, you had it on the wrong way. You got to turn the thing over. You try uh-huh. to roll the thing down. All the blood goes out of the penis and into the brain because the brain needs to figure out the condom. No, I'm telling you, I've tried that too. It just it ain't working. You tried what? I tried putting it on with a quickness, and it just ain't happening. You got to be. You have to shave precious tents. You understand what that means? Yeah, but I mean, I've had it. I've had it before. You know, where I got it on and it's staying there, and then I'm going, and it just kind of goes down again. You know. All right, but I'm saying you have to look at your penis like it's on fire, and that condom's a wet blanket. <laughs> the bob sledding event, huh? Yes, I want you to, uh, like the luge, except for instead of uh, sliding uh, it down the uh, the track, there you slide it into your girlfriend. So it's a psychological problem. Yeah, you have. Here's what you have to do. You have to get your. All right, I I hear your problem, and here's here's the answer. You have to equate putting the condom on with some success. You have to know in your mind that you can successfully pull this off, or put it on, as it were. And here's what you have to do: when you're alone, when the wife's out of the house, when the girlfriend's out of the house, you have to spend a couple of condoms. Don't be cheap and try to wrap them back up and stuff them in the con- in the wrapper. You got to go through a few and work it. Get the muscle memory down. That way, it'll be a no-brainer. Boom! Your penis will know what's going on. Everything will be fine. Am I right, Drew? Mm. People need to practice this. Uh, it's, 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 very important. And not only that, but I think if you practice it, then it just would become second nature. You'd get into the sexual thing, boom, you go for the condom, pop, it'd be on, you wouldn't even know it was on. It'd be like uh, shifting your car or something. You know, you don't have to think about that. Lynn, 21, you're on Loveline. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey. Hi, Lynn. Um, I just had a question. Um, I'm coming from a four-year relationship, and it was pretty serious. Um, and I just had a question. We broke up uh, this past month, and I ended up meeting this really, really cool guy. He's really nice. Is it possible to go from a four-year relationship to an immediate relationship and for it to be, you know, genuine without it having to be a rebound type thing? Because I really like this guy, and I really don't want it to be that way. I don't want to hurt him, and I don't want to drag any old skeletons out of the closet that might come out eventually. Hmm. Uh, Lynn? Uh-huh. Were you done with this four-year relationship? Uh oh. I hope so. Uh, you I gave mean, a you gave a sigh there, Lynn. I mean, it, I think it was done a while ago. I just, I mean, I was really young when I met him. I was only seventeen, and he's a lot older than I am. Okay. And I, I think if anything, um, I stayed with him out of kind of habit. Okay. And, did Did you break up, or did he die of prostate cancer? <laughs> <laughs> no, not to my knowledge. He hasn't died yet. Um, we broke up. Okay. Well, listen. The, normally, I would uh, I would not recommend this, but sometimes you get in a relationship, and it's over at the three year mark, and you stretch it out for four years. Yeah. So basically, you're just sort of along for the ride. People do this with jobs. You know, you're essentially emotionally done with this relationship. Uh, you know, you were probably done around Christmas time, but you 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 you, you, you stuck it out until May. Mm-hmm. You know. Then you meet someone you like, you hook up with them. You're, you're smart enough. You can judge people. You know yourself. If, if it's good, it's good. Every girl I've been with in any long-term relationship met a new guy immediately and basically got married to them. <laughs> and they're happy as hell. And I put a curse on them mm-hmm. for that. But they're happy as hell. Well, so maybe but, you can do it. You know, I think the only thing you have to watch out for is that the fact that you're coming out of a relationship might color how you perceive this guy or any guy that, that you're about to get involved with. Wait a minute, she's might... dating a black guy? No. <laughs> just, what are you saying? Just, I'm just, it's like, it's like uh, not having eaten for three weeks and then seeing a meal. and Oh, it's the best meal I ever had. Right. But it, it, it may just be the perspective you have. I mean, as yeah, you go out and date, right. you may find yeah. this guy, oh, wait a minute, what did I see in this guy? I like, I like that. These other, this is really what I'm looking for after you get out there and find out what it is you want in a relationship. So you're saying if you haven't eaten a long time, even a poop sandwich is is going to hit the spot. Mm. Uh-huh. Potentially. 
Oh, well, wonderful. Well, you know, I mean, if anything, this guy that I'm kind of seeing right now, I mean, I think we could be really great friends. You know, oh, if, if yeah. Worst comes Make sure and work that into the next conversation you have with him. <laughs> He's going to be I'll elated. So you think it's possible, then? That I Yes, mean, it's, it's possible. Of course, anything's I mean, Don't ask us a stupid, yeah. is it possible question. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that you're asking it that way suggests to me that you have some at least semi-conscious concerns about the quality of this relationship. So just be careful, all right? Okay. All right. Take it slow there, uh, Lynn. And remember the amazing poop sandwich <laughs> reference. Hi, this is Mickey. Hi, right, I'm Chris. We're in Lush. And you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. G. Speaking of Lush, I ran into uh, lovely Mickey in the uh, hotel. Oh, no kidding. Uh, I believe it was uh, Saturday after the uh, big concert. And speaking of Lush, she was loaded. Oh, really? Sitting on that sofa just looped. And do you remember Do you remember that? I like, came up to her and went, uh, hey, it's, uh, yeah, it's Am. She was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Very nice, but just. Was she uh, on the main stage with you? Loaded as <laughs> That was totally humiliating. We had uh, Fred Schneider in last night. I had no idea that he was... The, it was this big concert I was at last weekend in, in Washington. And they had it RFK, and there was 50,000, 60,000 people there. And they had a second stage with uh, that Gravity Kills was on it and Boys Against Girls and a, and a few other few other bands. Apparently, Fred Schneider yeah. in his band. Right. Now, the guy, poor guy sitting in the studio across from me, and I'm going, Hey, what were you doing out there? Did you go to the show? <laughs> He's like, Yeah, I played there. I was like, Oh, crap. Because I, I never won, I won, never won to the second stage. I never yeah, saw yeah, a yeah, 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 you understand. Yeah, yeah. All right. He's not listening. Don't worry about it. Drew. Yeah. Tell me about your kids and their illness. Oh, jeez. I, I, they're all sick. I mean, I have, I have three and a half year old triplets, and they're all sick right now with this bronchitis that's going around in, in their nursery school. And uh, Adam mentioned the poop sandwich as we went into our break. And I just said, you know, my kids are so sensitive to that stuff that. Um, Jordan, one of the boys, was uh, watching. Walked in while his sister was who's sick, had diarrhea. Took one look at that and just puked all over the bed. Yeah, yeah. I just it was it was. I was standing between cleaning my daughter and her mess and him vomiting on me. It was a lovely experience. Yeah, after you've had kids for a few years, that kind of stuff does not bother you. Oh, I you am. Remember that so movie remorse. Parenthood? Yeah, where the, the little like girl vomiting goes, on. Yeah, Steve she goes, Martin. Daddy, I can I I need to vomit or something. You want no? You want to vomit? She goes, Yes. And there she goes. No. You get used to putting your hands out and catching stuff like that. Let me tell you, I would pour cement slab in the entire house. I would get a hose hooked All up. All the more would... reason why well, you should wait till the median age of life expectancy before we're doing this sort of thing. Absolutely. I would get some of those uh, big rubber boots, and I'd hook up a hose bib in every room of the house, and I would treat it like the baboon cage at the zoo. I would just spray all the poop down in a oh, one yeah. big universal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Believe me, I'd give them a hose in, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. We, we Wouldn't do it be stuff good? Like yeah, in the summer, that's what you do. You put them out in the back and pose them down. I would have something called a poop tank. Mm. I would just dip them in it every uh, twice a day. Put them out in the back. Get the what? What do you guys? Who? What? What illegals you guys hire? Like a Russians stop, or El Salvadorans? Stop, stop. Right, whatever it is, have them take the give them like an extra couple of rubles or whatever it is you pay them and drag them out the back. Dip them in the poop tank and bring them back. Oh, and then into the talc tank. Oh, wait a minute, I get one of those talc tanks too. Oh, I want to. I want to. Uh, that, I didn't bring my talc. I oh, felt, in I was, Washington. I, I, I felt unfresh. Five hours in the plane. In the plane, in the hotel, never had talc. Felt totally unfresh. They, they have these things called pharmacies? Yeah. I, I don't stores? think they have in Washington. Oh, yeah, they have. It's a, it's a West Coast thing. Yeah. Melissa, 16, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hey. Hi. Um, I have a problem. Uh, my boyfriend, we've been going out for uh, about six or seven months, and uh, he all of a sudden wants to break up with me. He doesn't want a relationship anymore. And... Um, I'm really confused because one minute he's mad at me because he thinks that I still love him, which I do, and I just don't really want to know how to express it to him. And he, we basically the other night fooled around, and I don't know what that meant, if that means that he still cares for me or um, if it just means that he wanted to fool around. I just need some advice on what I should do All and right. I stay with him or should I Let me him. Let me explain to you about the penis. Now, we, we work this the other way. Okay. Last week, but it also works both ways. Because what's happening this time, last week we had a call where the guy was going out with the girl. The girl called in. The girl said, the guy's not giving me any more sex. We're doing it like once a month. Uh 
Uh-huh. And I said, the penis is out of the relationship. He may love you. He may think you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. But the penis has gone on strike. The, p- the penis has put you in the platonic category. This is just the opposite, and it happens this way a lot. The guy's mind is out of the relationship. His brain says, look, we should break up. We're not getting along. We don't see eye eye on this. Side. The penis goes, up yours. I'm staying. I'm staying in this relationship. You go where you want. And, and, and women have a hard time really understanding that that could be just the physical element that's left behind. And there could be really no, I mean, if that, in fact, the probability is, right, Adam? The, the penis is that left That it's just behind. a physical thing. He does, as she puts it, just wanted to fool around. Oh, yes. Yes. The, and believe me, the guy comes knocking on the door. You open the door and the penis goes, say something, you idiot. Uh, hi. You do better than that, you jackass. Uh, I missed you. Okay, good. Can I come in? Fine. Good. All right. We're cooking now. Come on. You go in there. And then, again, stuff like, uh, would you say something? Uh, I really mi- missed you, and I, and, and I have all kinds of feelings for you. Good, good. That's perfect. Keep going. Keep going. You're on a roll. That's the penis. Yeah. See, talking the problem, to the man. Yeah. The problem is, though, I mean, he before we flew around, I mean, he wants to be all cuddly and stuff and, you know, just, like, hugs me and stuff and says he cares for me, and then all of a sudden it leads to that. All right. That's the penis ploy. Yeah. The penis is no fool. The penis uh, did not just fall off the cabbage truck. The penis has been around the block more than once. Yeah. Penis says, "Take it slow, champ. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bide my time here. We could do a little cuddling. Oh, oh, yeah, a yeah, good one. Ask her about the earrings. Oh, fantastic. That's beautiful. Stroke a genius. All right. Okay. Yeah. He'll take his time, maybe up to t- eight or ten minutes sometimes. Uh huh. And then the penis gets his way, right? <laughs> I mean, I just think you would need to talk to your boyfriend to find out exactly what's going on with him. Yeah, well, I, I just don't know because he's going away to college and I'm just going to be well, a junior next year in high well, school. So I, I mean, the best thing for you probably is to let this thing drift apart and you, you focus on sustaining your life where you live and let him get on with his new relationships when he goes to college, okay? You'll okay. find plenty better men than he, Melissa. I guarantee it. Okay. All right. That's another thing. The, college, the penis gets in the argument over leaving the college. Where are you going? Smart boy, going oh, like, what? Oh, Read I, books, and then you got to go. Oh, wait a minute, man. I'm going to I'm going to like San Diego State or Humboldt or something. There's like chicks and drugs and beer. Oh, all right. Well, let's go. <laughs> Hurry. I guess the penis is really one that influences your choices on where you go to college. Is that the deal? Oh yes, the penis okay. will. I I had my penis take my SAT. That's why you didn't go to college. <laughs> that's why. That's why I got a combined uh, three hundred. Liz. Yeah. <laughs> Although my penis does have better penmanship than I do, <laughs> the really? penis is dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, but but it, and, it, and it can't spell. Liz, seventeen, you're on Love Line. Yes. Hey. I had a question. I've been going out with this guy off and on for three years now, and I'm going out with him right now. And I mean, I love him and everything, but I have my eyes on other guys. Why do people say that? Well, I love him and everything, but. <laughs> You don't love him. You ha- you feel close to him. There's a kind of a comfort there. Well, no, I have a love for him, but I'm not in love with him. Yeah, you're not in love with him. You don't and he's him. totally obsessed with me. Oh, boy. <laughs> not to sound like conceited or anything, but he is. Mm-hmm. Like, not... I'm, only, I'm the only girl he's been with in those three years, and mm-hmm. I can't say the oh. same. Uh, oh, Liz, you're, are you pretty fine, are you? Oh, I can't. I don't know. People say that, but I don't think so. But <laughs> all right, who cares what you think of yourself? Who cares about your low self-image? If, as long as people think you look good in shorts, you're okay. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of this country, by the way. So, and Liz, I you would... got this guy's all tweaked out on you, right? Yeah. And and there's nothing. And and meanwhile, you're you're sort of you're looking around. Well, I went to Edgefest Memorial Weekend, you know. Yeah, you didn't hit me with that Birkenstock, did you? What? Okay, good. <laughs> well, I met a lot of guys when I was kid, uh, and a lot of them were like, whoa, hold up now. Why am I committed? <laughs> and I just don't know what to do. I mean, What cause... you need to do is you need to wrap this relationship up. You need to be honest with him that you need to see other people and don't give him this business, uh, we can be friends or I really love you, I'm just not in love with you. Just say my feelings have changed. I'm in a different place in my life, and I need to. I need. We need. But I am just so scared of breaking his heart because every time. Well, you're longer... breaking his heart every time you take another man into your cold, clammy arms. But I haven't done that though. You, your mind already has. You've yeah, had. You've had that. sex <laughs> with a soccer team in your mind. Uh, Liz, do you have a penis, by the way? No, I don't. It really sounds like she does, doesn't what, she? Mm, 
It's what you need to do, though, is to, is to end this relationship and begin to get but out. But like, I don't want to end it completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to have it, have the security. I have fun for the summer. Right. You, know? you want to have the security of this relationship and the closeness and all the comfort that you have. But you guess what? You can't have it both ways. Let me tell you. Let me give you a it's little. It's not good for you either to try to maintain that. It's ridiculous. It's what? Recognizable. Thank you. Let me give you a little automotive analogy. You have a car. It's okay, but you're not nuts about it. Right. And you're looking at new cars all the time. Mm -hmm. And you want a new car. And the deal is, is you got to trade in your old, old car to get the down payment for the new car. Yeah, it'd be great to keep them both and right. then get a third car. But it doesn't work that way. You can't afford it. Right. You get rid of the, you get rid of the old one. You get the new one. Same way with girlfriends. Same with boyfriends. You got to trade them in. And, you know, hopefully they're in decent shape. You change the oil, rotate the tires, stuff like that. And, you know, get a pretty good... Pretty good uh, high blue book on him. Jane, 21, you're on Loveline. Hi. My problem is, is that I want a woman, and I can't seem to find any. Yeah. That's Adam's problem, too. <laughs> I had Ann on the trip, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst puss I've ever seen her make. <laughs> that was it. Uh, she didn't know it, you know. I was going to say, where was I? Uh, you were passed out. Uh -huh. It was under the stage. Yeah, right. I think the Foo Fighters were on. <laughs> I, I did you to that Mentos song, baby. Oh, yes. Jane, uh -huh. you want to find a woman? Yeah. Yeah. Where have you been looking? Um, I don't know. At the college that I go to, it's just hard to start up anything. Isn't there a, a gay lesbian, any kind of gay lesbian organization there? Well, there was, but there was hardly anybody that would join it. I think there's a lot of stigma attached to it. Yeah. Everybody's afraid. Hmm. There, there's a, a covert gay and lesbian uh, organization, or at least a lesbian organization uh, that most colleges uh, have. It's called the uh, Women's Softball Team. Should you, should you go join up, Jane? I, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. You don't have to take everything I say so damn seriously, Jane. Okay. All right, Jane, you need a woman. It sounds like you need one pretty bad. Well, no, I mean, I... I don't know how to start. Have you ever been with a woman? <laughs> yes, I have. And it was wonderful. Um, it lasted three years. You went down on a woman for three years? Right. Holy <laughs> you must have Your jaw must have seized up after about a year and a half. Okay, Jane, you're... you're <laughs> I've had enough of Jane. I'm making a lot of bad jokes. Yeah, I, you are. I understand that. Yeah. I'm punchy tonight. Yeah. I'm glad to be back. But there's a certain courtesy snicker you give. Oh, the, the who? Oh, that the callers give. Well, you know, you give a, <clears throat> yeah. All right, you know what I mean. Jane just sat there like a big chunk of petrified wood. So my advice to Jane is keep looking. Keep looking. Go to Network. one of those bars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you want to find center. lesbians? Go to a lesbian bar. Party, go to... Meet other lesbian people. Ask them to introduce you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Huh. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew, as a board certified physician. That is best Yeah, it's good to be back. Drew, you ready to you ready to get back and Let's um, go. make a little dent in society? We'll try. Help the kids as best as possible? We will try. All right, Mark, 19, you're on Loveline. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, First of all, I want to let you guys know that I uh, really trust your opinion, and I think that you guys offer some good insight from time to time, hmm. and uh, that's why I called you. Okay. Uh, my problem is uh, I'm in a fraternity, and uh, my fraternity brother, my big brother in the fraternity, he's the kind of guy who he's the guy who leads you along to the fraternity. Anyway, he uh, is dating this girl who's been a friend of mine for over a year, and uh, she was dating another guy in the fraternity at one point in time. And it turns out, basically, that I've realized that I've come to have feelings for this girl. Mm. Um, the other night, we kind of got together a little bit, and uh, I really don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm really stuck in a position where, all right, either I need to back off, and I don't want things to affect our relationship, our friendship by any means, but also, you know, I really think it wouldn't hurt to have a re an actual relationship with her. Uh, is your uh, big brother going to kick your ass? He can't. Why? <laughs> I'm bigger than him. Okay. So, what'd they make you do for hazing? <laughs> I can't tell you that. Oh, come on. Oh, no one gives a I crap. Mean, I mean, what I meant to say is we don't haze. You don't, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You, you, yeah. you go out and uh, beat up some ethnics or something? 
Well, no. Swallow some goldfish? Yeah. Really? Like that. You know, no, not really. I'm okay. Kidding. You know, each year the handful of kids die during the hazing thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is fine for me. That's that's uh, Darwin's theory. Well, there. you know, you put enough beer in us, we'll do anything. Yeah, stupid enough to uh, <laughs> swallow a live mackerel, then Absolutely. you deserve to die. Absolutely. All right, Mark, so you, you got, you, how long have you known this girl? A year. Well, actually almost two years, but I, we only, we've been really hanging out for a year. Right, there's nothing wrong with getting to know someone, becoming friends with someone, and then starting to have some feelings with someone. I mean, that's pretty natural stuff. All right. Uh, but I, I want to pursue these feelings, and I know that... It we was, already did. Well, I, I know I did, but I, I want to continue to pursue them. Well, I'm sure that's what she wants to, or she wouldn't have started up in the first place. Well, she doesn't make it seem that way. Yeah, but it's, you know, here's the deal. Here's what she's dealing with. She's playing a little coy because she's worried about her feelings. She thinks this was just some sort of drunken hard-on thing you did. No, 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 no. It, I mean, it was actually done in complete sobriety. All right. Then just a pure hard-on thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, all remove, right. you remove the beer and you're still left with the, with the hard-on. I'll you understand? You that much. Okay. So she thinks you just did one of those guy things, and she's going to lay back. She's worried about her feelings, and she's going to pretend like, eh, it didn't mean anything to her either, and wait for you to say something because she's not going to put herself out there. I don't and, think that's the case because I told her beforehand that Mark, I, stop know. crapping on my theories. <laughs> Right, you're, right. you're still wet behind the ears, you little frat boy. Oh, uh, come on. You don't know anything about life. All right. Look at you. You're, you're with... living in the same room with eight guys named no, Chip. I don't. I actually and... have my own room, but anyway. Your own room? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good for the fraternity scene. What's that? All right, but listen, you're basically, your goal in life is to, uh, you know, steal a carbons of test answers from a <laughs> dumpster and drink beer until you vomit. So don't tell me about life. I'm telling you about women. You're listening? I'm listening. I'm absolutely listening to you. All right. She's got some interest in you, or she wouldn't have started up. I understand that. She knows the the, the ramifications of this because you guys have been friends for a year. Okay. She knew what it meant, or two years. She knew what it meant okay. when you guys fooled around. Yeah. She was sober. You were sober. She knew what she was doing. Yeah. She has some interest in you. I know that. She told me that. All right. Well, then just go pursue it, would you? You think I should pursue it? Yes. But you like about, her? She likes you. What about my big brother? Forget about Chip. I can't. He's, he and I are so close. It's not. We have the same birthday, for crying out loud. All right. Well, then why don't you guys uh, just go, like, um, hey, you know, flip, flip a coin or something. Yeah, why don't you go press <laughs> no, your ass up against the, the car question. window or something? That's absolutely out of the question. You know? All right. Listen, Mark. Yeah. You like her. Yes. She likes you. Yes. Then that's it. Believe me, this whole fraternity nonsense stuff, you'll be over in a couple of years. You'll look back at it. it you'll laugh. No, but he's also my friend is the thing. I mean, he's a very close. He's a close friend of mine. He's my best friend. Who do you like better, you or him? Well, obviously, I like the girl better. All right. You like the girl. Then second comes you. And then third comes him. Yeah. All right. All right. Fourth is Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> a close fourth. All right. I'm, I'm giving him my blessings. This whole fraternity stuff is a big waste of time. Uh, but nothing, nothing but a bunch of uh, teenage guys getting together, sucking down beer, and uh, it's a, it's a run around nude half the time, too. <laughs> Stealing each other's women, drinking each other's beer, giving each other stupid names, piling into a Winnebago and going on road trips. You know what I was doing when I was 18? I was I cleaning think you're, carpet. I think you're jealous. That's the deal. <sighs> I know. That is the deal. I know. This guy's got the life of Riley. Yeah. Kim, 14, you're on Loveline. Yeah, um, I had a question. I have sex with my boyfriend. I went to Sigma Sigma Shag. How old is your boyfriend? 15. 15. Okay. And um, I didn't bleed or anything, mm -hmm. and it didn't hurt. Mm hmm It doesn't have to hurt everybody, and it doesn't have to bleed. Kim? Is yeah. that is that such bad news? Huh? No, but I was also drunk at the time. So you wonder if you even had sex? Well, I know I did. I just, I don't know if he did, you know. If All right, like... Kim, I'm going to speak for you for a second. Okay. She wants you to pry in a little, Drew. Ask a little about the father. Ask a little about the family. See, maybe she was raped or molested. Go ahead. Were you? No. No. No, it's nothing. I'm not getting that. You're not? No. Well, she was like, well, I was drunk. Yeah. yeah. And aren't you supposed to bleed? Uh, well, that's why yeah. I thought she was she was hoping that she hadn't had sex or something, but no, she's not saying that. Kim, do you f do you feel like you're taking advantage of in any way? No, not really. Okay. I just I was kind of worried because because you didn't see any blood and there was no pain. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I can see where that would be cause for concern. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. <laughs> worry about how you're feeling about the fact that you've had sex, that you had to get loaded to do it, that you're 14 years old and you're engaging in this kind of thing. True. Don't ruin Make the sure experience. you wear a condom, that your boyfriend wears a condom, that you, if you're going to have sex, that you at least admit it to yourself and you prepare with birth control. Okay? Okay. All right, Kim? Okay, Kim. Thank you. Kim. Yeah. Why are you so bummed out? I mean, you, you, you sound bummed out about the whole thing. I, uh, it just, I didn't plan for it to happen or anything. Uh, were you raped? No, it wasn't my, anything like that. I just, I, it's still kind of like a shock that I actually did it. Okay. Right, right. Maybe, you know, it's not like, you know, you're, you're harmed for life as a result. You, you know, what you need to do, perhaps, is to look at what you did and why you did it and learn from it and perhaps recognize that you're not ready to do this and, you know, you're going to wait a few more years before you do it again. And, and try to assimilate the feelings and, and learn from it. Murphy, 23, you're on Loveline. Yeah, uh, how's it going, guys? Good. Uh, well, I wanted to know where is a good place to get erotic literature, you know, without having to go into those uh, adult bookstores and all that. Uh, under the bathroom sink. <laughs> I see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it, Adam? Really? That's, that's where all mine is. Really? Absolutely. Oh, my God. M wait, Murphy. What? You want erotic literature, but you don't want to go into one of those sleazy adult bookstores. That's right. Oh, yeah. Engineer Mike brings up a very valid point. The uh, One Nut Wonder speaks. Are you online? What? Okay. You know what that means. I'm going to take that as a no. Do yeah. you own a computer? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. You have a computer? Yes, I do. All right. If you get online, there are whole rooms full of just nothing but uh, the sickest uh, stuff that's ever been uh, put to paper. Really? Yes. You can uh, have yourself uh, in, front of you, in front of your computer for uh, days on end. You speak from experience? I do in the having yourself part, but not in the literature part. I'm not into that. I see. I'm not a reader. I'm a looker. All right. <laughs> You're a viewer. I'm a voyeur, <laughs> as they say. That's uh, French for uh, I'm going to whack off over here. Good enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't You didn't know I spoke French, Drew? Jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. uh, Drew, if you, if, you, if you, what, do you have a job here? I thought we had commercials. No, we don't. We're taking another call. And 19, you're on Love Line. Hi. Um, I have a two-part question for you guys. Okay, first of all, I'm 19 and I'm a virgin. And um, I'm proud of that because all through high school, I saw all my friends get pregnant and mm -hmm. diseases and stuff Good. like that. Good. I mean, you really learn from what the, what yeah, the consequences not, of your friends' behaviors were. Yeah. I just yeah. don't want to, when I'm ready, I'll do it. Anyway, mm -hmm. so um, I have a friend who's like the sex fiend. And she's done everyone, I mean, <laughs> she just, she likes sex a lot. Anyway, um, so she kept telling me, try it, try it, try it, and I just don't want to. But anyway, so for my birthday um, last year, she bought me a gag gift. She bought me a vibrator. Uh -huh. And um, I was kind of disgusted at first because I was just like, oh, my gosh. But then I tried it once or twice, and, I mean, I didn't see what the big deal was, but I didn't have anything to compare it to. But anyway, um, I'm just wondering, first of all, if when I do sleep with a guy, if he will be able to tell that I'm not a virgin because of that. I mean, I, I am, but if he will be No, he won't. The guy's going to make, hey, I smell like, a, I smell plastic and a couple of C-cells or something. No, he will not be able to tell. All your feelings in okay, Ann? Yes. Yeah, he's not going to know. What do you think? Uh, look, you're going to have a drunken 18-year-old. You're not going to have Columbo, the uh, vibrator detective, on top of you. Well, anyway, okay, my second question is, um, how would you feel about that if you had a girl who was a virgin except for that? And, I mean, would you get creepy because of that? Or would well, Adam would be terribly disturbed, I bet. I would be elated. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, you know, I'm from the Valley, so if I can find someone who's been uh, with someone uh, less than whatever the uh, forum holds, I am excited. I would be excited to be with someone who's been with thirty only 30 men. I mean, okay. 
Okay, but what about someone like normal? Would they? Do you think that? Other than you, Adam, right? A normal person. Oh, well, it's hard for me to speak for normal people. You know, sitting where I'm sitting. But oh, I love you, Adam. A, a, a lot of the a lot of the guys. Uh, some guys would think, oh, it's a little. You know, I. You know, oh, that's a little naughty or something like that. But. You've never been with a guy. What are you supposed to do? Perverted or anything? No, no, no. That's fine. It's it's quaint. <laughs> it's cute. Yes, you've never been with a guy. What? How? How can you complain? If someone's a virgin, they're a virgin. I, I don't care if they got the Eiffel Tower up there. If they're a virgin, they're a virgin. I didn't really. I didn't really like it. I didn't enjoy it that much. Oh look, uh, the, the, well, uh, save that for someone who cares. And believe me, we don't believe you for a second. Telling, uh, don't work well, out okay. your rap on us. Well, you enjoyed yeah. the hell out of it, and go up there and uh, hold your uh, head up high. <laughs> I'm a virgin. That, I got a that, vibrator. That seems to disturb you that she didn't. It was. Well, it is a little, a little bit of a setback. But you enjoyed it, didn't you, Ann? A, a little. Yeah, a little. Well, I don't have okay. to compare it to, so. Believe me, guy's not going to be able to be able to do that. Okay. Unless you put like a, uh, uh, a space heater in his butt and pour water on him or something, it's not going to happen. All right. Okay, or at least give it like an epileptic guy or something like that. All right, Ann, stick with the vibrator until you find a good guy. Okay. And, and you do not have to smack him over the head with it on the first date, by the way. No, I don't. I Put it in the panty drawer and pull it out. Feel them out a little bit. Wait till things get going, okay? All right. All right. Stop being so damn honest. Well, the magic of technology. Will it ever cease to amaze me? We just got... Uh, a fax that I'm just uh, moist over. Uh, uh, Drew's uh, senior picture. Drew, were you a senior here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can describe I think, I, I, this. Ann was a little bit uh, excited, too, I must admit. Uh, first off, he has the uh, is sort of a long hairdo, almost sort of a page boy, but parted. Right. If you can, if that's possible. Yes. Is it all coming back to you now, Drew? No, no I don't know how I did that. Sort of looks like, if you ever see any uh, early... Not early, but sort of medium uh, Beach Boy album covers. It's sort of a Brian Wilson But type. longer. Long hair. Yeah. Uh, parted way over to the side. I think he started his uh, part in uh, Fort Lauderdale somewhere and then just carried it over his right ear. Uh, looks to be a little heavier. Yeah. I don't know. You a little heavier there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had yourself a collar about the size of Montana. Actually, one of those Dantana-type collars. You ever watch the old Vegas reruns? He his collar comes in is he actually the collar is, is it covers my whole chest yes his his collar would like leave the casino while he was still in the showroom <laughs> and some kind of like funked out half cowboy uh, looks like a beach Tim Leary threw yeah. up on the right. top of that shirt. Right. <laughs> man were you a mess <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, see that, that's my motivation for doing this show to save people from that kind of discomfort I'll and tell pain. you, Drew, you are such a piece of ass now. <laughs> no wonder you are so whacked out. See, I always pictured you as being, you know, the good-looking, uh, you know, uh, bread-winning, uh, well-educated guy with the uh, smart-rimmed glasses that you, uh, that you are now, but apparently you weren't. Uh-oh. We'll be back in 10. How <sighs> to save my children from this. Drew, the, no, I do. the matinee. Idol. 1 800 L O V E 191, fax number 310 I'm Adam Carolla. The chunky guy with the hair parted in Nebraska next to me is Dr. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what you got to do with your kids, Drew? Yeah. Show them this picture. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Just show them this picture. I'll tell you who was smart. There's two smart guys, fashion wise. Uh, there was James Dean and there's Jim Morrison. Right. Now, James Dean wore the same pair of 501s and the same white T-shirt just about everywhere. Right. You just can't go wrong with that crap. Jim Morrison wore the same, same pair of stinky leather black pants, same pair of just pointy black boots, and basically another T-shirt or button-up shirt. And just every picture looks the same. They never look bad, those two. They, you know, and Jim Morrison got fat and got the beard at that one point there. But basically what you got to do with your kids is just put them in a pair of 501s, put them in a Hanes T-shirt, and tell them they can't take it off all the way through high school. Because people are going to take pictures. My senior portrait, I had a corduroy blazer on where the thing was as, as deep as the Grand Canyon. These corduroys were, I mean, you yeah, could really yeah. put like furniture could the, get the trapped pants. between the, the oh, pants. you had the big yeah, corduroy yeah, pants yeah. there. I had an afro like Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, 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 I got a big melon head. I just look like a big freaking idiot. <sighs> I hope that doesn't surface. Oh, well. Cammy, 21, you're on Love Line. I'm going to have to look for it. Yeah, hi. Um, I think my husband's cheating on me. I've been married for two years, and we just had a daughter five months ago. Wow. And the reason why I think he's cheating on me is because the girl that I think he's cheating on me with, she calls here, and every time I answer the phone, she asks me, are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? And, you know, I didn't think nothing of it, but when she started calling, you know, two, three times a day to talk to him, it kind of got me a little suspicious. He carpools with her to work. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't come home till like, two hours later than when he's supposed to be home. And I've asked him about it, and all he takes and tells me is, no, nothing's going on. You can trust me, da 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 And, I, you know, if it was just me, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. But I have a daughter that I have to think of. Of course. And I don't know whether or not I should trust him. But but maybe maybe the pressure of raising a child and, and having gone through the trauma of childbirth and watching your body change through that and all is really what creates these kinds of well, anxieties I've, anyway. You know, I could see it if, you know, I still had all my baby weight on me and everything because I've gone down, you know, 15 pounds lighter than what I was before I had her. I understand. I, I'm and not, it, but, and but I just still, don't know whether or not I should trust him or if. You know, How's the relationship going? It's overall very good, I think. But you know, have your no. moods otherwise been okay since the childbirth? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I think at some point you have to make a decision whether or not you're going to believe your husband and go with that. I mean, your, your priorities seem to be lined up properly, and that you have the child's interest ahead of a lot of things. And what what you should keep focusing on is that one of the things the child needs is a stable family situation you're going to stay focused on making that relationship work to care to, to make that happen tammy yeah, th- this has been going on for for three months and you know and now it's really starting to irritate yeah but this has been going on meaning what the frequent calls and stuff yeah so why don't you begin to tell him that things are not that great in the relationship then? I, I i have told him that and i asked him i said do you you know do you not want to be with me you know and he says he says i don't know oh Oh. And I said, well, you've got to think of your daughter. I mean, he won't even take her to the park or nothing. It's like he doesn't want nothing to do with our, our family life. He's more interested in this girl. All right, Cam- Cammie, how old is this guy? Wow. He's 25. All right. He's a little old, but still a prime candidate for my uh, testicle confiscation plan. Oh, really? You're going to just take his testes? Yes, I will be sending a representative out. And when is he usually home, Cammy? Um, He... He should be home. He should have been home two hours ago. All right. Well, tell him a nice man in a, in a bright ble- uh, green blazer will be swinging by the house with a pair of uh, bolt cutters. Okay. And I will be collecting his testes. They'll be safe in a mason jar until he's responsible enough to use them. Okay. Cammy. Sounds good to me. Listen, the guy sort of gave you a... Uh, I mean, you asked him if he wanted to be in the relationship or if he was happy in the relationship, and he gave you a, a you know, sort of... Yeah. I mean, he didn't give you a good answer. Okay, let me just ask a couple of quick questions. Okay. When this guy comes home two hours later than he should come home, what does he say when you ask him what he was doing? He says, I got, I didn't get relieved late because he works at a prison. And he says, well, I didn't get relieved late till late. And I said, it does not take you because he only works 15 minutes away from our house. And I... I took and told him it doesn't take you two hours to get home. All right, and he does this consistently. Yes, this is like... For the past three months, this has been like every night. All right. Mm-hmm. Here's what I would say. Uh, all right. I will go for the lie. I'm going for the balls out lie here. Okay. Yes. Here's what you do. Do you have this woman's phone number? Can you get this woman's oh, phone I number? Oh, I sure do. All right. You call her up. I could talk to her, but <laughs> that would. All right. I'll call her up. All right, Cammie, I'll call her up and I'll say, listen, I know what's going on. I'm the uh, assistant warden. I realize what's going on with uh, uh, Dick Swinger, whatever your husband's name is. And the jig is up. All right. So let's let's put her on hold. All right. We're going to put you on hold, Cammie. Okay. We'll get to the bottom of this. Okay. Wait a minute. Well, there's a few things. What's her name? Laura. Laura. What's uh, what's his name? Scott. All right. Lauren Scott. All right. Uh, what prison does he work at? He works at in California. All right. The old Evan Hall. All right. Fantastic. All right. We'll get on hold. Kill some time there. Drum right. Let's go to another call. How about uh, Melissa, 22? Melissa. Hi. Um, I've been friends with this guy for about a year, and we've become best friends. And 
until recently, about a month ago, I kind of realized I was starting to have feelings for him. And he has this habit of dating these really beautiful girls, and then about three weeks into it, he realizes that they're they're kind of stupid, don't kind of have what is on the inside. He keeps comparing them to me all the time. But then again, he goes to the next beautiful girl who's blank inside. Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of getting tired of it, and it kind of hurts me every time I have to be his friend and listen about this new girl that he thinks is wonderful. And then he tells me how she's not like me. And so I don't know whether to keep being friends with him or... I, to tell him how I feel, I don't know what to do. So you're pining away pretty good for this guy. Yeah. But he's he's kind of, uh, I mean, not real mature. No. And yeah. I include myself in that not real mature. But he's also not into Melissa. He's not into you. Not not physically, at least. Well, I guess not. I mean, he says that I'm beautiful and that I'm like physically attractive. It's just he doesn't want to go there. This is another phone call we need to make. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. It, 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 he says you're beautiful. He says you have a great personality. He says you're physically attractive, but he doesn't want to go there. Yeah. All right. Somewhere he's lying. I haven't figured out if it's the beautiful part, the physical attraction part, or the smart part, but I'll probably go the physical, the beautiful part. I'll narrow it down to one of those two things. Somewhere he's not into you. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know. He says that we're so much alike. And that I probably mean, isn't going to change, is it, Adam? Absolutely what? not. What? No, he's 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 not into you that way. He's into you as a friend. I know, but I don't understand. I mean, he just he we get along so well. He thinks I'm so wonderful. See, this this is this is this distills down the difference between men and women. Yes, you women, you use your brains to figure out a relationship. That's your problem. Yeah. Uh, men, man uses his uh, junk to uh, to determine. A yeah, relationship. But, I mean, he does that for three weeks, and he goes, "Oh wait, I don't get along with well, her." On the inside. eventually, men learn to use their brain. They and, just never do it very well. And, yeah, and if, after a lot of bad relationships, and you know, just because you're good looking doesn't mean you can't have a personality. True, I agree. But he keeps finding these women who don't have a personality, and he dumps them. And then you know, he goes, "Wow, I wish I could have it." Both, you know, have best of two worlds, then he just goes back to doing the same thing. Yeah, he, you know, all right, here's the deal, Melissa. I don't like this guy. And I'll tell you why I don't like this guy. Because, first off, he's screwing up all these good-looking chicks who I could have a chance with, but now they're all gun-shy because he dumped them after two weeks. Damn it. Number two, thanks for throwing the damn it in. No problem. Here's the deal. He knows that you're interested in him. He doesn't. He knows. Believe me, he knows. Or he may be worried about it. He knows, okay, and he's, he might worry about it. But he, no. he knows that you're interested. I don't know what degree he knows it, but on some level he knows it, and that's why he's kind of dangling it in your face a little bit. He's screwing with you a little bit. No. He knows, he knows if he made a move, he could have you. Maybe not marry you, but he knows if he asked you out, you would go with him. Uh, he's not that stupid. Yes, he does. Know. Listen, you've made it abundantly clear to us, and believe me, you've made it abundantly clear to him in your own subtle way, which probably wasn't so subtle. I've just been a good friend to him. And that's why he's always talking about, oh, if there were more like you and all that crap. I, I think he's, 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 he's sort of keeping you out there on the fringe a little bit. He's, he's like the puppeteer, and you're his marionette. So should I keep being his loyal good buddy, or should I just, like... I don't know. Not, I don't be acquaintances from, distance myself from, to get over it. If it's too painful for you, then you got to distance yourself from it. Hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. If it's that's it's tearing thinking. you up. It's tearing you up. Go find a good man. Okay. This guy's jerking around. <laughs> you don't want this guy. Listen, he's proven that he's immature. Yeah. All right? All right it's time for you to be mature, too, Miss Mature. Yeah. Always complaining about him being immature. Meanwhile, you're chasing some Casanovas banging rampway models for three weeks at a time. <laughs> Who's immature here? Huh? Yeah. All right. Turn the table on her. <laughs> Hold on. All right, wait a minute. Let me get back to Cammy here. Cammy. Yeah. All right. Uh, we cannot call this guy's lover. No. His alleged lover. Right. All right. Okay. I, I just don't feel comfortable. All right. With... I understand. Uh, let's. Because not... I wouldn't want anybody to give my phone number out. Uh, all right. Fine. Let's not waste half the show. Okay. Living in the past. Here's what I want you to do, though. I want you to call her. Are you a good liar? Yeah. Can you act? Yeah. All right, we're going we're gonna to do a little thing. Let me do a little scenario here. Okay. You, I'll play the part of, uh, of Laura. Okay. Okay? You play the, uh, actually, well, let's let producer Ann play the part of Laura. Okay. The adulteress. Absolutely. The uh, carpooling adulteress. 
CD. Or C A. Um. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, Cammie, mm-hmm. you play the part of yourself. Okay. I know it's going to be a stretch, but <laughs> you play yourself. Okay. All right. Now, you call Laura, who in actuality is producer Ann. Okay. And, and you, here's what you do. You give her the ploy. I talked to Scott. We had it out. He laid everything out on the table. I know exactly what's been going on. He promised me he, he wouldn't carry on with you anymore. Uh, no hard feelings. Don't put her up against the corner. You know what I'm saying? No hard feelings, but it's over. Do you understand? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but the thing is that he he d- doesn't want to stop it. You yeah, know? But, 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 but. We want to find out whether it's going on or not, though. Okay. All right? Are you're you going to trick me. Yes. <laughs> we're go- you're going to trick producer Ann. Okay. All right? She's Laura. All right? Ready, uh, Mike? Do we have a phone thing? <laughs> God damn. All right. Bring... Hello. Hi, Laura. This is Tanya Scott's wife. Um, I figured out what has been going on between the two of you, and it's going to stop right now. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play stupid. I had a conversation with Scott, and we laid it out on the table, and he told me everything. What did he tell you? He told me that you've been fooling around with him, and that's why he's been coming home late from work. And... But that's not true at all. Well, that's very true. When my husband comes home, and he, my, why would my husband lie to me? Well, I don't know, but we're not doing anything at all. Well, apparently you are. If he's taken and telling me this, why would he come out and tell me this? Cammy, not apparently. You are, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can have him back. Yeah, that's right. I can't because he was mine to start off with. Hey, he's no good in bed anyway. The hell he's not. I guess you haven't had good. Until... I'm done with his small penis. Uh huh. You just better watch what you say, you hoe bag. Because... All right, Cammy, this is becoming a little too cathartic <laughs> for you here. It's no longer an acting role. This is life. Right. You feel better? Yeah, I do okay, actually. Good. All right, that felt I good, feel didn't worse. it? I just called hoe bag. <laughs> <laughs> you little home wrecker, you and. Damn. All right, Cammy. Yeah. All right, that wasn't bad. I was pretty solid. Now here's the deal. You cannot show a, a chink in the armor. Do you understand? You call up absolutely unequivocally convinced that he did something. You just got done talking to him. As a matter of fact, he stormed out of the house. You understand? Mm-hmm. And, uh, make sure he's not over there banging her or anything while you, when you call. I mean, make, make sure he's somewhere else, right? Right. And then give it to her like, it, like, like God came down and told you himself. All right? She'll okay. crack. All right? And then when she cracks, you can crack Scott when he gets home. <laughs> but make sure he takes his, you know, his belt off with the gun and everything. Yeah. Okay? All okay. right. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. What's going on with prison guards? I don't know. You, you know, you know, it's funny. I don't know if they do this in other, other cities, but they do in, in Los Angeles. I got a crazy cousin who's, uh, who's a sheriff. Mm. Well, again, he's not my cousin. He's one of these people who was, uh, Called your cousin. was forced to be my cousin because, God forbid, my parents should bring someone in who are just friends and them not be immediate family. <laughs> yeah, it's Uncle Gabby and your cousin over here, and it's like, oh, for Christ's sake, just make them friends. Now I'm all confused. But anyway, again, I, I think they do that so they don't molest you. <laughs> they make you family. But here's the deal. This guy's a sheriff. Now, this guy had to go, in order to be a sheriff, in Los Angeles at least, you have to go in prison right. for two years, and it's part of your, like, rookie training. Mm-hmm. Instead of hitting the streets, you go through, like, I guess you go through, like, the academy, and then they send you off for guard detail, the local prison, for a couple of years, and then you get out, then you hit the streets. Mm. So, basically, you get to practice beating the crap out of people with a nightstick and hosing down inmates. I mean, who are you dealing with when you're in prison? You're dealing with a bunch of surly, scary, tattooed gang member guys who are making knives out of spoons. Right. Then they let you out. Eh, go deal with the public. Mm. No, no wonder then when you pull over some guy, yeah. you beat the crap out of him. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's all you've been doing for two years. You've been practicing hosing people down. Right. All right, Drew, you never want to join in on this stuff because you're scared you're going to get shot with me. I know where my cousin will protect me. Lisa, 15, you're on Love Line. Um, yes. I have a problem. That guy is using me for sex. Who? Guys. Guys? Like, yeah, I've been with, like, I left my virginity, like, five months ago. 
And I've been with like 18 or 19 people since then. Mm. Uh, five months? Yeah. Hold on, i got to get the abacus out. About one a week. <laughs> one a week? Um, Kind of, yeah. Jesus. There's been two this past week. Oh, okay. Well, what, were you sick the week before? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, down week. All right, Lisa. Yeah. You, you need to be appreciated by men on almost constant basis, don't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's up with that? I don't know. Something's up. Something's up. You're, you, you're so insecure that you, you need guys on top of you all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Well, something happened to you. What happened to you? Why don't you, why don't you feel good about yourself? I was just, like, really insecure about myself. Uh-huh. Well, what ha- uh, anything happen? No. Mm-hmm. How's your dad? Fine. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, do you visit him once in a while in prison? <laughs> he lives with me. Oh, he does? Yes. And he's good to you? Yeah. Oh, don't tell him about the 18 guys, by the way. <laughs> well. Oh, Jesus. Drew. Yeah. The way to Paulina gets to be 15. No. Oh, yeah. I can't even think about it. Oh, yeah. Um, Something is wrong, at least, and it's not that guys use you for sex. Is that you open yourself to this kind of abuse. Uh-huh. Okay? The way to not open yourself to abuse is to not get involved in this way. Just like the what was the call we had earlier with the two people alone drinking beer and watching porno. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the, they they set themselves up for these sorts of things. Uh-huh. And the the one of the common reasons that people do this in your age group is they're trying to master something that was that happened to them when they were younger. Uh-huh. And and or having some as you as Adam was sort of pursuing this problem with self esteem, you need validation, you're going after it in that in that inappropriate manner. You're acting out some feelings. A woman can always be validated by a man if that's what she's looking for. She can but, always get attention. She can but, always get a few know, beers b- bought for her. She can always get a boy, you look hot, baby. But if that's all you need, you can that, find it. it. Women don't typically go out and do that twenty times in three months if they need validation. It's usually something much more serious than that because very quickly the validation turns to, you know, bad feelings about oneself. So the most important thing for you to do, Lisa, now is to not have relationships with guys for a while, to sit back and try to figure out what your feelings really are that you're acting out in this manner, and uh, hopefully you'll figure it out and ultimately be able to pursue the kind of relationship you really want, which has nothing to do with what you're doing right now. Yeah, and they're like all over 18, too. They're like in the range of 18 to like 20. How, how did I know that? <laughs> Which is typically the kind of guy that will abuse a young person. Uh-huh. They're all 18 to what? 27. Oh, for Christ's sake. You're with a 27-year-old? Yeah. Pathetic scumbags on a 15-year-old. Well, what the hell's going on with this country, Drew? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, how far off am I on the testicle confiscation plan? Seriously. Oh, I I'm 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 want to support that plan. I'm going to do. I, a vo- I'm voting for it. I'm going to start on a volunteer basis. All you scumbags out there can just come by the studio and drop them off. But I'm giving like a two-week grace period for that, and then I'm getting my m- machete-wielding uh, legions, and they're going out on collection. Great. And they're coming after you. Well, a little later on this week, the um, seasoned Adam West will be in here. A, uh, a very fun guy who I have met before. Oh, really? Yes, I did a uh, sort of parody on him on the uh, morning show uh, about a year and a half ago, and he heard it, and uh, my roommate at the time did uh, did his voice, who does mm-hmm. a very funny Adam West, and uh, the guy the guy uh, said it was the best uh, parody he's heard of him, so uh, mm-hmm. he's a good guy, he's a fun guy, so uh, hopefully uh, he'll come in here and we'll just... Uh, We'll open him up like a uh, like an oyster, and, and and maybe maybe extract a pearl. You never know, Drew. Or two. Or two. And uh, also, the Deftones will be in here on uh, Thursday. So, still plenty of show left tonight, though, kids. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. I'm Adam Carley. Is that going to? Anne. Yeah. Not you, Anne. Anne. Yep. Yes. Sixteen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Okay, I'm like hot for one of my teachers. I'm bisexual and she's also female. I'm wondering if I like have any chance at all. Not, not if she is one of your students at the time. Well, no, 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 no. If if you're one of her students, you uh, that's what I mean. I'm sorry, it's getting late. Uh, I mean, if if you, if she is actually directly your teacher, then uh, if, and if well, she's... I'm not. Yeah, right. You want to know if she's uh, if she's if lesbian or not? Because actually, I, we, we I can the, tell you. We had this. How? Does she teach gym? No. Oh. 
I don't know. Special Could, ed, actually. Oh, special ed? Yeah. Ooh, well, that's well, tough. That's a, that's a coin lesbian. toss. I'm guessing she could be lesbian. Well, I spend the night at her house sometimes. What? I, I do. I what, mean, what's that all we about? don't, like, do anything sexual or anything. Why, why are you there? Why? Yeah. I don't know. Just for the hell of it, I guess. Well, I mean, you just I, show I, up at her... What? Hey, Anne. What? Would you listen to what Dr. Drew's asking you? You're telling us you're spending the night at one of your high school teacher's houses, and he says, how's that? And why are you doing that? And you go, oh, oh, you know, I just drive over. That's not the answer we're looking for. Nor is it the explanation for what you're doing there. How do you know her? What What are the circumstances surrounding this? Well, we sit and talk a lot. I mean, we're, like, good friends. Okay. Uh and is there, like, any way I can, like, kind of let her know how I feel about her without, like, I think, leaving myself wide open? Well, all right. If she is a person of integrity and if she is a quality teacher, she is not going to engage in any kind of relationship with you. I, I am all con already concerned that she's sort of violating usual boundaries of propriety by having you spend the night and things. I mean, that's just not quite uh, – it concerns me greatly. That ain't right. Yeah. And – now, to say, if again, if she is a person of integrity, it's reasonable for you to tell her how you're feeling so she can help you deal with that and redirect you and make you understand that it's not appropriate for you even to consider a relationship with her, then that could be a helpful thing. But I don't know if I could really advise you to do that, given that she's already sort of violating most boundaries. And Yeah. She's not married? No. And doesn't ever talk about any boyfriends or anything? Oh, uh, once in a while. Oh. Okay. So she's at least into guys. Right. All right, and, and here's the deal. Yeah. L let me explain something. Okay, I'm listening. I think I used this analogy uh, last week, but uh, well, I'll dust it off again. Since I'm in sort of the recycling mode, you know, first six months I was fresh. Now yes. the, I'm next, hearing a lot of stuff. Next over five and years over is over again. Uh, hey, Drew, what do you want to do? Stifle me with that Oops, crap? I beg your pardon. Like you don't repeat the same BS over and over again with no. your uh, anti-drug message and your stupid family values? Now listen. And yeah, here's what's going on. Here's what you are at age 16. You are into whoever is close to you. You are much uh, like uh, the dog. You ever see those hobos wandering ar wandering around? They got the stupid little dog, usually only missing a leg somehow. Somehow, I don't know what it's like, but when you want to get a dog and you're a hobo, they go, hold on, let me remove the leg. Even if you just go the pound. Excuse me, you hobo? Yes, okay. We'll take the leg off. It'll be ready Friday. <laughs> But there's always some dog, and they always tie a handkerchief around the dog. Somebody they can't afford uh, a house, but they, they afford clothing for the dog. But the dog looks at the hobo guy, and that is his world. That's the dog's world. That, that's all there is. The greatest master in the world could be, uh, you know, it, it is President Clinton to them. Little White House reference there, since I do swing by the pad every once in a while. Okay? That's what you are at 16. This chick is near you. She's nice to you. Boom, you're in love with her. Because she's near and nice, and that's enough at age 16. That's what happens. That's what we get all night long. The neighbor guy, I got a big crush on him. Oh, he's my first boyfriend. I'll, I'll like never lose him again. Though. I mean, huh? You know, I usually, I, I don't like have crushes on people. All right. I'm like, I'm like really physically attracted to her. All right, but she, you're, you, because she's probably nice looking, she's probably real good to you, and she's in a position of power, and she's older, and you respect her, and you admire her, and you're becoming attracted to her. But that's only because of proximity. Believe me, you'll go off different places. You'll go to college. You'll travel around. You'll fall in love with new people. This is one of those things that's happening because she's been inserted into your life. All right? It's not appropriate for you to make a move. It's, it's, it doesn't sound appropriate that she's having you over to her house. And I would, if you really like her, don't do anything because you're going to get her ass fired. This will come out somewhere. Uh, that's another issue, too. And she will, she will be canned and have to leave the city. It will be a huge scandal. All right? And they'll make a TV movie out of it. Get Susan Lucci uh, a little work. Okay, Anne? All Don't right. do anything. And if you're dead serious on her, then just be close to her until you're 18 and graduate and then make a move. All right? All right. All right. All right. Absolutely not. She's going to get loaded and make a move uh, this weekend. That's my prediction. Hey, Drew, fairly solid advice from... Uh, yeah, from I, the ad man. I realize tonight that a lot of what I do here is the ad man monitor. Oh. Just monitor what you say, make sure nothing too dangerous comes out of your mouth, and uh, we get on with it. Yes, you're uh, you're like you're sort of like the uh, FCC. Yes, Joni. Yeah. You're 19. Sure am. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. My question is, 
I'm having a disagreement with my friends, and I sort of want you to tell me who's right. Um, I'm, you are. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, I would tend to think so, too. All right, but go ahead. Um, well, there's this place in my town. Um, it's sort of like a bathhouse, and a lot of people do it in the nude. And I'm very comfortable with my body, and I don't mind going there with groups of people and doing these hot tubs nude. And my friends call me an exhibitionist. But I just think they're being prudish and are just sort of embarrassed about themselves for no reason. So do you think I'm being exhibitionist and I have some, like, need to show off for people or something? All right, you look good nude? Well, nobody's ever supposed to say they look good nude, but I've been... But I think I do. Darn it, I'm proud of my body. I have no reason to hide it. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, <laughs> my whole retarded, bent, twisted take on this whole thing is if people who look really good nude should be able to walk around nude. <laughs> they should be able to go to work nude. They should be behind the counter at the DMV nude. Just the, the boobs resting up there on the on the counter. Uh, uh, women, women, that is. And it's very comfortable to be in the water nude. Cause you're All right. Well, well, please, please, please. I know about breast, ble- breast buoyancy. You do not have to tell me about that. But don't give okay. me that whole crap. All these nudists give the same crap. The same thing. Oh, it's the most freeing thing in the world. Oh, you've never lived. Until- Listen, I've been nude. <laughs> and I've worn a pair of trunks. There's no difference, okay? One minute your balls are, you know, of, of, to and fro, and the next minute they're in your little trunks. But there's no big, well, there's no big beam of light hits you. My God, I'm nude! Oh, it's the greatest thing ever! I'm, I'm nude every night. It's no big deal. I don't, I don't so sit around going, oh, that, I love to be nude. So it's not a big deal then that I like to go there nude. No, but let's please let's let, do not try to make the argument of it's, it's oh oh that that two piece is so uh, r- confining. It's cutting yeah, off your circulation. I, I have to agree with you. There's really not a difference, so why should they think it's exhibitionist to... All right, here's what's going on. Mm-hmm. First off, are, 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 how many people are in these tubs? Um, well, last time we went, there were, let's see, seven of us. Seven of them. How many of them are guys? Uh, three. Three. And, and are the other four of you naked? All of us were naked. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's got to be a sperm slick... Uh, like the freaking Valdez on top of that tub. I no, mean. they were all flaccid. <laughs> yes, they were getting in and out of the tub. Getting into the tubs because they didn't see a nude for long enough. Getting out of the tubs because they were done with their business. Maybe two or three times. God knows what was floating around the top of that tub. Did the bubbles actually come up and pop no, or they, they just make big, in huge humps? Going to the sauna and going to the other hot tub and... Oh, my God. We were seeing them throughout the entire evening. Let me tell you how you would clean that tub when you're done. You know like you know when you take pudding and you put it in the fridge for a couple hours and it gets that, the, the, the top dries up, you get that film you can peel off? Uh-huh. You can really roll that sperm off the top of that. <laughs> like a freaking crepe. <laughs> you think so? Absolutely. I know what guys are doing in that tub. Believe me. Uh, the, the, you, not, let me so tell you. You know. Believe what, me if I said there was nothing sexual about uh, it. Joni, you know when the jet all of a sudden starts going. <laughs> oh, that yeah. means some guy is humping the intake. <laughs> well, I've been in tubs with women before. I know what goes on in these tubs. Well, all right. so do you think it's a bad thing then, though? No, but here's what's going on. Here's, here's the deal. You okay. look better nude than your friends do, right? Well, it depends who you are. Yeah, all right. Stop being modest. We don't have enough time for modesty. You look better in the nude than your friends. Well, yes. I have some friends who are. Oh, stop. Me. Just go along with me, for okay, Christ's sir. sake. I look way better than my friends. Absolutely, you do. And they don't like you walking around nude, getting all the attention. All the guys are looking at you, they're making the big uh, chum slick of uh, semen there because you're nude, and they're, they're all, all eyes are on you. Okay, Joni? And they don't like it. So instead of saying, hey, listen, you're making us feel a little insecure, or we don't like all the attention you're getting, they're just calling you a slut. I get you. So it's all about their insecurities and them It is. They're jealous. All right. But do realize that people will sort of perceive you as uh, maybe a little looser than most sexually and may try to take advantage of you. You ever you ever You ever get a big toe down there? No, okay. I'm still a virgin. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, d- just listen. Remember that the guys are, are a little whacked out, and, and please, you know, just be careful in that environment. Okay. All right? I had, I've, I've been in a tub before. <laughs> Oh, 
Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Crowley's Dr. Drew, and he is Michael, 32. Michael. Drew, how are you? I'm fine. Hey, I want to say you're cool, but all these people out there are just whacked out of their minds. All right, well, let's hear what you got to say, Mike. But I'm saying I, I had to call you because I need some help. Okay. There's a, a receptionist at the office. She's a Bond gal, and she's real cool, and I like her a lot, and I don't know what to do. A Bond gal, like, you mean like Pussy Galore or, or Snatchy McVulva or something like that? Well, and she grew up in the same neighborhood I did. She went to the Catholic school, and I didn't. <laughs> Wait a minute. How come people don't answer me? <laughs> they don't listen to you. That's why. They don't hear you. He said... They know you're going to say something completely unrelated to their question, and they just <laughs> tune it out. Yeah, but what the hell is going on? I'm sorry, Adam. He said, I, I thought... Just, what, what the hell's going on? That that's just occurring to you. I thought he said she was a Bond girl. Blonde. Oh, for Christ's sake. What the hell am I thinking? <laughs> All right, blonde girl. Blonde. Okay, what the hell does that have to do anything? Her hair color. Stupid comment. All right, Michael. Okay. Go ahead. Forget the fact she's blonde. She's a receptionist, and she's a nice gal. She's more than a receptionist. Say the word blonde again. She's a blonde gal. Bond. It sounds like he's saying bond. Yeah, it's true. It is. She's real blonde. Okay, there's the L. Uh, uh-huh. Was she wearing a new bouse? Well, uh, <laughs> today she wore something that looked like it was a prom dress, but she said it was a retro fit. Uh-huh. Well, to me, that's blasphemy. Well, it made me nervous, so uh, I, I need some advice. Well, no, I, I understand. Right. Why can't you ask someone out? Well, because I wanted to talk to the doctor. Am well, I talking to the doctor? Yes, and, and, and this is Adam speaking, and I'm going to be bunt and to the point. All right. <laughs> you you want to know about the blonde gal or what? No, I just want to know why you can't ask someone out. You mean, well, you mean like my wife or something? What do you mean your wife? Well, that's what I'm real nervous about. I mean, she's a blonde girl. You want to make her your wife? What? What? You want to make her your wife? No, I already got one of those. Oh, okay, you're two time. Okay. Michael, you, no, you, no, no, you, I don't want to. Michael, no, 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 Michael, no, 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 no. You, I'm not two time. Michael, yeah, you didn't tell us that. Okay, I'm a married man. Right? All right, I'm a married There's man. There's a real problem here. Yes. And it's not about the blonde receptionist. Yes. It's about your marriage. Michael. I, I love my wife. Oh, yeah. Michael. Yes. You're a little bit drunk now, aren't you? Uh, yes. Yeah. You've been drinking. You're, you're what the hell is he saying? You're, you're, you're totally bitched. No, I'm not. I had a glass of champagne. I brought the wife home a rose because I was feeling guilty. You right. had a tumbler of scotch. You didn't have a glass of champagne. I had a 40 of Mickey's. No tumbler of scotch. Come on. All right. All right. He's all right. He's, um... I don't know. He's being, uh, belligerent. <laughs> and I don't want to talk to him. <sighs> Drew? It's sad. What's sad? It's sad for his wife. Well, I, mean, I don't even know the guy's married. That could have been totally bogus. I don't think so. What is it about? Well, hey, let me just, a quick word of advice to everyone with uh, ovaries, even if you had them removed. Mm. Stop marrying idiots. Do you hear me? Stop marrying drunken, chauvinistic... Better yet, stop, stop subjugating your own needs on behalf of idiots. All right, what... If you want to marry an idiot, that's your own problem. But, you know, try to maintain some self-esteem in the relationship and make sure your needs are being attended to. Yeah, well, or just uh, step past this whole process by not marrying an a-hole. I mean, a-holes and idiots can be brought into line. Really? Probably. Seen a good woman could straighten me out? Yeah, some things. Deborah, 24, you're on Loveline. Hi. Um, I went, I'm 20, well, you just said I'm 24, and I went to the gynecologist for the first time today. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I feel, I was like, I, I was crying when she took my blood pressure. I was like, so I, and I feel just like traumatized and violated by the whole experience. And it was a female gynecologist? No, it was a male. And why was it so traumatizing to you? I don't know. It just, I mean, it wasn't even, 
it wasn't anything the doctor did. It couldn't. I mean, I was I was upset about it before I even went in. You were crying when you're getting your blood pressure taken. Yeah. I'm not, so you're I'm, already upset. Yeah, I was just nervous before, and I didn't think it was going to be this bad. And I just I I've, I've been feeling like just nauseous and sick all day. Why? What? 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 What is this trigger for you? Why is this kind of thing so traumatizing? I don't know. He called me in his office afterwards and started asking questions about sexual abuse. Right. That that's sort of typically what you would think of somebody that has this kind of reaction, especially at your age. Yeah. Now, if uh, if you go to the dentist and get this kind of treatment, then that's that's cause for concern. But the gynecologist is kind of the guy's job. Right. And he's asking, "What happened to you that this is so upsetting to you?" Right. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't have any sexual abuse in my past that you know of. Any physical? Well, that's ab- just the point. I don't. I mean, I've had these feelings before. Like there's something wrong because. Right. But I don't. But I don't remember anything. There's, What's I, your first memory? I mean, of childhood. How old were you? The first, the first uh, memories you had. I, I mean, I have memories of when I was around three. Right. I, I have memories of very of being very young. And then, and then what? Um, all along, I, I have memories all. So it's along. not as if you have a memory gap or anything like that. No, there's nothing like there's not a big chunk blocked out or anything. I, there's not there's not like years that I can't remember. Right. But I just I I remember like having this inkling that it was kind of. I'm also I've never. Um, have you ever been with a guy? Well, yeah, but not. Well, I don't mean I don't mean gone to a movie with a guy. Have you ever been with a guy? Been intimate with a guy? Yes, but I've never had sex. Didn't, all right. And I feel like I always felt like there was something, something wrong with me because of that. And now after this, I just feel like there's really something wrong that I can't figure out. All right, uh, let me ask you a few pertinent questions here. Obviously, this is very upsetting, so I'll try not to. Uh, I'll have Drew go easy on you. But here's the deal: How's your basic sanity level? Would you say you're easily upset about other things? Do you watch, like, uh, commercials with Sally uh, Struthers in it and break down and cry, or are you pretty pretty solid on, on all other topics? I would say I'm pretty solid. I, I um... You work. You support yourself. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you're not a heavily emotional person. I, I have to say I am emotional, but not not to this extent, not to, like, the... Extreme like this. Not to the, no, not at all. To okay. Like all that. right. So it's really about when it comes to uh, topics of, um, of, of, of the uh, genitals. I mean, you, you're a virgin. Yeah. You, so, and, and you're 24, which is, which is by Loveline standards, uh, you should be carrying a walker at this point if you're a virgin. But it's pretty old for us, at least. So obviously this is an issue. And, and it's a very emotional one for you. Yeah. I mean, and and and, uh, and and Drew and I are perplexed because we're wondering how you manufactured. Here's what we're trying to figure out. Where did you get this huge warehouse full of pain, uh, full of frustration, uh, full of uh, guilt. Mis- guilt and misgivings guilt? When, when nothing happened to you? Why do you say the word guilt? Well, you're, you, uh, Drew said guilt. I'm not going to back it up. Drew, why guilt? Why, why do you react to the, that word? Well, I mean, I, I, I feel guilt a lot, and I've been told. Right. That it's, because that's, that's sort of an old-fashioned way. that. <laughs> before, but, Drew, it, that's a very good ploy, by the way. She called you on guilt, and then you threw it right back at no, her. No, it's that, it's that if this is 1950, and when we're feeling this way, you'd say, oh, you're raised in a very religious, austere environment, and you were made to feel guilty about your sexuality. In 1996, you th- you, the, the thinking more is uh, along the lines of something terribly traumatizing happened to you, and that's why you feel this way. But, yeah, it's possible to feel very uncomfortable about your sexuality if you were raised in a terribly, terribly enmeshed, rigid environment where, where you, you're led to believe that. Quake? Are you a Quaker? What's that, Deborah? Is that? Deborah. What? That's just the thing, though. I wasn't, yeah. really. So? It, wasn't, it wasn't strict or anything. And when I, when I am intimate with someone, it's never been, I mean, I've had the awkward moments when I was a teenager, but. Um, All right. I, it's never. It's Deborah, Deborah, please. We only have a few minutes. So basically, what we figured out so far is you're you're kind of nuts on your own, but it's only about this topic. Okay. All right. Okay. So you need to investigate this. See someone. You need to talk to someone. You need to talk to someone who gets paid way more than Drew and I do, and solve this because this is a major issue for you. If if you erupted this way at the gynecologist, this is a very serious thing. 
So you need to talk to somebody. Uh, can and, I be blocking memories? I you you very be. well could, be, could yes. be, yes. And you need to talk to someone and, and find out what's and, going and on. Ask that gynecologist to refer you to someone. I mean, obviously, he was concerned about it, and I'm sure he would have someone in mind. You know, like another gynecologist with a smaller hand? Mm. You're so sensitive. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give the phone number. I'm not going to give the fax number. Maybe I shouldn't even bring it up. I'm not going to give it. Drew, still yeah. reeling from his yeah. senior portrait. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Somebody faxed us over a uh, picture of Drew in high school with the uh, flying nun collar on his uh, bad hillbilly shirt and that <laughs> uh, funky sort of Tom Petty type hairdo. And uh, he was a mess. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know what? He is just. I mean, let's be honest. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, let the only, the only nice thing about this, the only nice thing about this, is that there is no doubt at what time in history this was taken. Yes, you could place it exactly, almost to the date. Yes, the uh, Ice Age, I think, yes. is when that was taken. Yeah, fashion was uh, not a good fashion. Uh, well, the whole seventies. Oh. What was that? Like seventy six? I was. Yeah, exactly. Thank God you, you weren't, weren't wearing any bicentennial colors. Ugh. That'd be the capper to that picture. But let me say something about Drew. Very good-looking guy, especially when you weigh in the whole education thing. <laughs> I mean, he should really, for his looks, he should really be a Neanderthal-type brain. And and let me tell you, this works same with guys as it does with girls. You know, guys are always complaining, and girls are always right. complaining about that stereotype of, right. oh, she's good-looking, she's got boobs out there here, but she's got no brain. All right. And it's not a coincidence. People that grow up really hot, and the boobs keep growing, they they don't have to deal with it. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about it on the plane. And I was thinking, who, what woman of, like, you know, you know, Janet Reno type, uh, uh, you know, um, Indira Gandhi, right. Margaret Thatcher, what woman, what, Madam Curie, what woman had a really big set of cans and really made a huge contribution to society in, 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 in where you're talking about politics, you're talking about science or whatever, and I thought, no woman. What goes on in your head? And I'll tell you why. It, it, because it, when you get a really good set of cans and you're like 15, you go, enough with this damn biology. I'm going out on a date. Oh, okay, same thing with men. Really good-looking guys usually are not the doctors or not the lawyers. Once in a while, a guy slips through the cracks and then he becomes uh, a uh, John John Kennedy type, and everyone goes nuts because not only is he good looking, but he's got this education and he's an intelligent guy as well. And that's why guys just women just 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 bust their panties for a John Kennedy type. But most good looking guys, eh, they're like construction workers, or they're maybe they're firemen or something like that. Drew, for a guy with a degree, is damn good looking, and I, I hope you take that in the spirit in which I meant it. That was the homosexual spirit. All right. Okay. Take it that way. <clears throat> you want to say anything about me before we move on? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> and? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> what? You're a carpet cleaner. Yeah, all right. That, that speaks for your looks. Thank right? you. <laughs> so you <should> be... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, me and the El Salvadorian guys, the midgets, cleaning carpet all night long. Fantastic. All right. Have people I need to thank the, uh, speaking of good looking, there's the beautiful Lisa doing the phones, the lovely Sherry doing the phones, the angular one, and my new traveling companion, who was really? just a joy. It kind of joy. scares me the way you guys are talking to each other. Just days. a, a little joy bit, to travel with. intimacy. Wasn't Doug with we you? We did have fun. Wasn't Doug with you? Yeah. We had a good time. That's uh, Ann's uh, husband, Doug. Yeah. Great guy. Doug paid for everything. <laughs> Great. He wrote yeah. it off. Ann gave me like a, a, a s'mores bar or something on the flight. And it was sort of a, it was more than just a bar, though. It was right. the whole, we broke granola. Broke bread, I see. Right. Uh -huh. uh, I want to thank the One Nut Wonder engineer, Mike, for doing a fantastic job. And I want to thank myself again tomorrow. No guests? Well, we don't need a guest to do a show, do we, Drew? No. All right. Adam West Wednesday, Deftones Thursday, and mahalo. Somebody spank me. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.